If you were just tuning in, it's our ladies' night out and we're discussing the danger of forgetting our history. Please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, tweet at us at Ways Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways Show or SMS or WhatsApp to 0818-038-4663. So our phone lines are now open. We would really love to hear from you. So back to the conversation, but um, before that, I would like to read a comment from one of our, a comment that's been sent in. It says, the image makers of the current administration are still portraying themselves about after six years of mere opposition. They need to go back to history lane and learn the rudiments of image making. That's from Rafael Akori Zaria. Do we think that this present administration would learn anything from the past? Do you think? Because I don't. I don't. I don't think so. they are willing. They are from the past. They are not willing. <laughs> <laughs> they are not willing to learn anything from the past because, mm -hmm. like you said, they are from the past, and because they are from the past, they know all the dynamics and the because really, what has been our past? Everything. What has been our past? Mm -hmm. Really, you know. I think that because our situation keeps getting worse, we compare worse with bad. You get hmm. because it keeps getting worse. It compares yes. worse with bad. So we don't have any anything good to actually, you know, measure. Because for it. me, the old days are so old. I can't remember. <laughs> let me let me. What you just said now? How we compare? <laughs> we compare worse to bad. I was having a conversation with a friend of mine about um, the election and voting who to vote for, mm -hmm. and. Um, so I gave him three options. I said, okay, Buari, Atiko, and then I mentioned somebody else. And devils, I said, so I was like, okay, devils. so. Um, who would you vote for? So let's say, let me call the last person, Michael. And he says, oh, he will vote for Atiku. I said, why? Mm. He said, uh, because Atiku is better than Buhari. Really? And they left Michael. I said, so why are you not voting for Michael? They don't he said um, that he doesn't think, Michael would not get a lot of votes and his own vote would not count. Wow. So he would rather vote. I was like, see, if... There are 100 people in a room, and 90 of you are thinking like this. Michael that would not weird. go far. And if Michael has potential to actually lead and do better, you do not. You have not given him a chance to prove himself. And people that do not so know why history do you keep are going doomed back? to yeah. repeat themselves. So why, why, why do you, you think because um, Atiku is a lesser evil, you would vote for him? <laughs> for the I'm like, evil. Come and on. that is the Nigerian mentality whenever we want to vote for the next ruling party or leader. So, ladies, let me take this, and then we'll, we'll talk about the the the, the um, history that how it connects to our uh, ethnicity and tribalism. Okay. Okay. So we have this all the way from Mokwaemi from Canada. Mm -hmm. Africans are the only ones who have their history told by someone else. Isn't that weird? I read the book The Miseducation of the Negro, and it's surprising that that's what the author wrote in 1933 still persists. Hmm. We have been really dealt with. I have learned more about my history than I learned from the formal education system, which put the white man first. Wow. I used to wonder for every topic in school, they would say, Mr. A is the father of biology. <laughs> Mrs. B is the mother of chemistry. Hmm. All these characters were not local, so, neither, so I either looked up to them or looked up to my people. Ever heard of the people who insist it was the white man who told us how to wear clothes? Exactly. Yet, we produce a derail in southeast and die in the north. History is revealing. Beautiful. Hmm. Okay, so we have um, Richard was, from Lagos. Okay. Let's just take Richard from Lagos. Hi, Richard. Hello, Richard. Hello. Yes, how? Nice. We can hear you, Hello, Richard. Please proceed. Good evening, guys. Good evening. Yes, um, I, I, what I want to say this evening is that uh, wherever it was that um, we removed history from our curriculum, actually did that intentionally to keep a lot of people in the dark. Exactly. I finished high school in 1990, and I will tell you, I did history, and that was the only subject I came out with, with an A1. It was so wonderful. We started from Nigerian history. We went to West African history, North African history. We did, uh, we did East Africa. We did Southern Africa. We did the world history. Do you know what? It exposed me to so many things that I was shocked to discover that wow. history was not 
I've been removed from the curriculum. I was so shocked. Mm. Wow. Let me tell you guys the truth. Whoever did it, whoever the people that did it was a was a gang up to make sure people don't know what has, that a whole generation, a whole generation of like twenty years has been denied the knowledge of the history of this nation. Mm. Who is that American citizen that doesn't know the history of America? America. Exactly. Hmm. They all know the history of their country. Everybody knows the history of their country. If you go to Rwanda today, every child can tell you what happened in April of 1994. Mm -hmm. But now, ask any child between the age of 20 downward, let me say 25 downward, you they can't even take it higher about the civil war that happened in Nigeria. <laughs> That's why you see, you see a lot of madness going on in the country. True. That's why I see people behaving because if, if you, anybody knows what happened in the Civil War, they won't want a repeat of that in Nigeria. They mm. will behave themselves. Mm. Guys, I think I just told you this evening. I'm going to lose this one. I continue in Africa. <laughs> thank you thank very you, much. And we, thank you. And we do understand why you're upset because if you look at it, and I, and I was sharing with Jennifer that a people, they had that popular saying if you do not know your history, you're bound to repeat it over and over, over again. And most exactly. of these cyclical things that keep happening, we keep you know, going around in circles because we do not know our history. And thank you very much. You know, we can understand your passion. <laughs> we yeah. can understand to, your, to, your to passion. To go back yes. to what the other um, uh, contributor yes. talked about, um, learning more about history from when, when she actually traveled out, is that, that was in a, in a document that was written in 1939, basically. 33. 33. Fantastic. I, I love BBC, okay? On BBC, there was something I, I watched, and it talked about how slave trade was eradicated in Britain and how the slaves were moved from Britain to Syria alone today. So we didn't know anything about this back then. And it was a culmination of different um, tribes. That's why in Syria alone today, we have the Creole, we have people from diverse cultures. But if I want to cut you, Syria don't then. you think, so you love BBC, which mm -hmm. Nigerian channel will we say we love that we tell us about our history? Because that's the, and mm -hmm. again, I repeat, the power of history lies with the storyteller. And okay. it comes back again to it the comes fact back that to the people that are telling our, sto our stories because they will tell the stories mm -hmm. to somehow suit them. Okay, exactly. I'm not saying that all the stories are, uh, but, yeah. but it is. most of the stories are distorted. Like what, like what um, Richard just said, how um, history has been taken out of the system because you don't want people to know about the things that have mm -hmm. happened in the past. You don't want them to know that this is who you are. It all stems from control and oppression. Mm. Yes. Now, you, you remember when there are some things that would happen and probably a particular TV station is telling the truth before you know the next day they shut them down. Oh, yes. Mm. So Especially during the military. Yeah. yeah. So who, who, which TV station do you think would boldly want to come? I mean, people are protecting their businesses. And to be honest, you cannot fault them for that. I want to protect but, my but don't you think? But don't, don't, don't you think that one of the core jobs of journalism is to tell us the truth? At True. what expense? At to tell us the truth. But let's not. <laughs> how many people? How many people? In Who as much as, in as, much as I'm, right let's now. say I'm, a, I'm an investigative journalist mm -hmm. and I want to actually come out to tell the truth. Mm -hmm. How many people? Like, but there are you, people there. Let's like, not. Like, I, I need us to touch on a few things before we run out of time because it's getting so interesting and we will run out of time. But let me okay. just put out there not everybody is like Mandela. No, most definitely. Most, de so most definitely. So just very, very few. But, very few. But how many, of the, how many people like Mandela do we actually know? People that actually. And you know, when we started the game, we say, who are the touchbearers of our democracy? So well, apart from celebrating June 12th, what did you know about the incident? Mandela was a rare breed. After Mandela, there was no other Mandela. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'm saying is that if there was even, even no. in South Africa today. Okay, no, okay, let's not say, let's not talk about the 27 years in prison, but there are people no, that have stood for the truth. Yeah. I'm just saying yes. that even the leaders in South Africa today cannot yeah. measure up no, to who no. Mandela was. No, they was. can't. I agree with so, you. So totally. It is, it, I don't know if it's an African thing or is a, is a general thing, but the key thing is this, that the earlier we understand that history is a vital role, has a vital role to play in our daily existence, and the more we try to inculcate it into the um, upcoming generation so that they can also pass it on, on. the better for us. And look at this. Mandela were, grew up at, during a time that values were paramount. He, he, it was either 
you lose it or you don't. You, it's either you have it or you don't have it. There was no, there was no gray area uh, at all. You see, let's leave that argument. Let us touch something else before before mm. we know we're running out of time. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk, to talk about history and um, tribalism and ethnicity. And why? Let me tell you. Um, so I was talking before the show how in Delta you have an Igbo speaking part, you have a Yoruba speaking part, you have the um, originals as I would call them. Mm -hmm. The please help me with the language. The people you know, they're not the so called are they? You mean the, the robots? No. Yes. Yes, the robots. Okay. Now you can see that there is some convergence at some point. People moved from somewhere to another location. Absolutely. How many people know that? Because I strongly believe that if we know our roots, mm. if we know how we became, so the people that are called the middle belt, how did they arrive there? How did people settle there where they settled? So you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. How, did we, how did we end up where we ended up? How do we have similarities in some places? And I think that this is lost. And it's one of the greatest dangers of not telling history as it is. Now, if, if I may step in there, I, I think, I don't know how to break this down, basically, but look at it from a nomadic point of view. Back in the days in the village, we had brothers living together. Yes. A brother breaks away, goes to another place to settle. Before you know it, that brother has another family and somebody from that family breaks away and goes to another place to settle. Gradually, you see there is a chain forming, gradually. Mm -hmm. And in the process, what happens? We are somehow related, but as we break away, we are imbibing different cultures, different traditions, and we try to do things the way we want it to be in our own clan or community, basically. So I, I think basically in this context, we do not have a clear-cut um, um, document that states this is how we were. But you know, you talked about. But you know, you talked about um, the verbal passing of knowledge because I think mm -hmm. that in some way, you know, we could mm -hmm. have passed this history on. And then, mm -hmm. as we get, you know, to the modern age, age, we begin to document these things because it would just be nice. And as you have rightly mm -hmm. pointed out, there exist I, I strongly believe that there exists an interconnectivity between the different tribes and the thing is if we know that maybe we will behave differently towards each other interconnectivity correct i agree with you but you know today because of the values we have based on the fact that history has been distorted the values we have is based on who has the most money, who has the most to give, who, 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 who is able to show that they have actually arrived. Let me use Nigeria term. So such values, no historian wants to sit down and start documenting anything. Even if you have people that want to document um, um, events, basically, without distorting them, everybody wants money. They want to be paid. They want a situation whereby they won't go hungry in the cause of standing for the truth. Are you, Isi, are you trying to say, like in this Nigeria, they're not true people that would do things for history itself. Like the, we don't have collectors, we don't have historians. And but what, but I don't, I don't. Tell I me think one. I usually, no, no. I, I tell I, me one. <laughs> I, I agree that. We see that bankers, we see lawyers. We I see, agree. We see lawyers. I agree we that see I don't politicians, know what. But t show me one historian. You are right. So because I don't have proof, I think I would just put Because you know, <laughs> seriously, if you did study history in school back then, I don't know about now. You were seen as you just wanted to get a degree. Absolutely. Yeah. It's just like studying Yoruba. So do we think that historians should begin to play a vital role? We should begin to create roles that historians can feel and be proud? Absolutely. I think so. I think I, I, was, I was actually going to ask a question like, now that we're here, we've seen that um, mm -hmm. history has been distorted. History has kind of been erased. But it, how do we Do how you, do we do you erase forward? and distort things that you have not collected? Because for me, I think that uh. it even has to start with the collection. Collect first because if you do not in even Nigeria, have it, it <laughs> they've, <laughs> they've you, collected. They've collected. Collect. What they've it collected is it. not what they see. Huh. What they've collected is not because the there should full be, story. There should be but an something was collected story. still. Okay, you're talking okay. about story, the, yeah. You're talking about the recent one, right? You're talking about the recent one, but I'm saying everything that happened in the past. Like I would expect, really, 
that if we were to document the um, events of our military leadership, okay, and the military government and the administrators, that there should be a very thick book that would tell us about each of them, their families, how they overthrew. Who they, so you would see things like, oh, um, so um, Buhari, who, who, who did we, um, um, so you see things like maybe Abacha came and took over Shoneko during his interim three, mo mm -hmm. um, three months. Mm -hmm. But what happened really? Afterwards. Afterwards. It was later on that we were hearing of the Abacha looting. Oh. It was later on, you know, after his death. There is but always to, a looting after the <laughs> But do, do you get what I'm saying? Yes, I guess that there should be, and I think that that's one of the things that would help us. If we begin to know this history and we know it from a young age, exactly. just like the other people have captured these things, mm -hmm. you know, and you know it from the young age, you know, and, and I think we would, we would solve a lot of problems because we have tribes where women are chi can hold chieftaincy titles. But how many young girls know that? How many young girls knew how hard, you know, um, Mrs. Anikula Kuti, Kuti. How did, to how did, to drive the first yes. mm -hmm. And then you don't have to always look at the foreigners to see that they were, they, you know, they had female emancipation. Mm -hmm. Because I would tell you, some of these countries, as early as 1980s, are still not allowed women to vote. Talking about Fumi, I think the only thing they told us back then well, is that she was the first woman, blah, 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 blah. But what led exactly. to her actually driving the car? What did she have to go through? How did she pull that off? What was the decision? What was what, uh, yeah. what the events that led that, to her yeah, that led and, that, how yeah. many, and how many women were able to do this right after she accomplished it? Exactly. What? How Who did she pay? Who was the second woman? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> no, the second person most of the time is not documented. <laughs> it's, it's usually the first. You but now that now that we are here and we know that history is not what it seems, it is. How do we move on? How do we make it better? Like, w what are we supposed to do as parents, as young exactly, adults, as Exactly, because I was youth? coming, I was coming what, to ask yeah, that. What are we supposed mm -hmm. to do? Because it has to be like a collective effort. We would talk about that, but I think Isi has a comment from um, a guest. I just want, mm -hmm. I said a guest, sorry. <laughs> she has okay. a comment from one of the uh, oh. viewers. Okay, contributors. So please okay, yeah. um, it says, uh, what is history if it is not meant to shape our future? Youths nowadays are culturally uprooted because history has lost its values in the present age. I, said I, I think the same we, thing. Agree, we agree with that, and that's what we have strongly said. I said that, that earlier, basically. And do you, do you see that we're even losing our names? Everybody wants a fancy name. Uh, no, for, <laughs> those, for those, that's what I, you know, for those that really know how to pronounce their names, I think there was a story about uh, an individual who. Um, was um, she's a comedian? She was she was she lived in the UK, and I think her name was one jaw breaking Igbo name like that. I, I can't um, remember. I, Uzo, Uzo Daba or something. something like yeah, that. that's her yes. name. I, I think she was. When she in, was yeah, talking, she's an and she said that her mother told her. No, not no, Yvonne. Her Oji. mother now told she was, her. To, she was in black. Is the orange is the new black orange. or something like that? We have less time. So <laughs> she was told to actually um, call her name, and the teacher now said, "No, you have to break it down yes. so that we'll be able to pronounce it." And so she shortened it, and she went back home and said, to "No, her Uzo. name is going to be Uza from now on." And the mother said, "No." Can they call, um, do you have a, um, a, a Greek girl in your class or a Greek <laughs> person from Greece? Yes, she said yes. Do you have somebody from Czechoslovakia? She said yes. <laughs> so if they can pronounce that name, they can, they can pronounce, pronounce your name. Please, please, the let's, moment sorry, you let's just quickly take another, another <laughs> Thank comment. Thank you, so I have to comment. Yes, yes, please, um, the first one is Nigerian mentality is what am I called crowd mentality. Mm. People tend to use others to validate their thoughts, which is true. Mm. Today's generation owes it to the next to start documenting using all all the technologies and exposures we have what you're doing on your show is an example mm. now the second comment is it will surprise you to know that some of our historical materials written by our people are in western countries libraries mm. they value documentation that's why they keep these things mm. so what what they have said it's not a, a lie but in wrapping up quickly ladies i'll start with you jennifer we have seen the dangers what is the way out for you? What, what, you know, what would you say is the way out to reclaim this lost history? 
Um, first things first, I think they need to reintroduce history in schools and they, they should stop teaching about the surface level information. Stop giving um, the young children basic information. You need to go in depth and let them know what has happened in the past and what they need to know. And that's in the school. But then when you get back home, parents need to also educate their children. You need to give them all everything that you know. Thank if you. it means that you need to take them back to their village, <laughs> to talk to their grandparents, do Thank that. You. Thank you. If you quick, She's perfectly seconds. said it all. Family education plays a huge role. But let's also have a central point where we have everything about uh, history documented. And that will make it easier for us as, uh, as a people to know our roots. Nigeria is rich in its culture and for me i would say that you know we should start collecting so yes maybe we haven't collected the places that are dilapidated the muse museums for example we should fund them we should let our people know who they are where they're from and what they are ca capable of so i think it's time to start either collecting back our history from abroad or rewriting our history and recording you know new historic events Absolutely. Now, ways was bettered from the need to inform, inspire, influence lives towards action. And this year, we started our CSR focus on curbing unemployment in Nigeria. If you are a company, please partner with us by allocating internship slots. And if you're a job seeker, keep watching ways and follow us on all our social media handles. This will be an all year round engagement. So tell a friend to keep their eyes on ways. Now, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. History is our guide, and without the knowledge of history, we are lost. That was said by Louis Farrakhan. Now, see you tomorrow at 8 p.m. where we bring another great conversation to your screen. Ciao.